Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build your own website using Ruby on Rails and Bootstrap. So Bootstrap is a very awesome CSS component library, and it's perfect for beginners because you really don't have to know anything about coding, and especially you don't have to know anything about designing UI or making anything look good because you already have all the components right out of the box. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm really excited to be back and I will hopefully be bringing you many more amazing videos, starting with this one. So to build a website with Bootstrap, it's really easy. As long as you have Ruby on Rails installed, you can easily install Bootstrap in a new Rails app. So I'll just show you how that will work. So I'm gonna start off by opening up my Ubuntu terminal, because the way that my uh, development setup is, is I have a Windows computer using WSL, which WSL is Windows Subsystem for Linux. It allows you to have a Linux machine inside of your Windows computer, meaning I can have all of my normal Windows apps like games or programs, but at the same time, I can use this Linux shell, which is better for installing all the programs that we, are, that we need for Ruby on Rails to work. So yeah, also you'd wanna install Ruby on Rails. If you don't already have Ruby and Ruby on Rails installed, where I would recommend you to go is the Go Rails setup guide. So you guys very detailed guides which will help you get your system working. Whenever I follow these on my machine, like most of the times it works. I mean, I have ran into a couple things here and there that you might have to get around, but this is where I would recommend you start. It's the best place on the internet that I can find for the overview. So just go through here. Even for Windows, he shows how to set up Windows subsystem for Linux to WSL which that's what I'm using in my tutorials. All right, so now that you have went through that process and you have Ruby on Rails installed, you can verify it by typing in ruby-v and we'll check the version that I'm on. I'm on 3.3.6, which is the latest version you can see by the release. It was released about a month ago. We can also do a rails-v to get the current Rails version. So it looks like for whatever reason, I'm on 7.2.2, which is actually kind of outdated. Now we're on Rails 8 is the standard uh, Rails release since they finally released Rails 8. So that's what we will be using for this video. So to make sure that we have Rails 8 installed, we can just run gem install Rails and it should get the latest version of Rails. All right, so we're running it. And just like I thought, it's doing the setup for the new version of Rails which is actually 8.001 instead of Rails 8. So that's good, that's even better. That should be the latest version. And now that that's done, hopefully uh, we can be able to run Rails-V again and see the updated version, which it is. Now we're on 8.001. So if you guys are following along, uh, your setup should look just like this. You're probably gonna be on Rails 8, unless you're watching like way in the future. Uh, but otherwise, this is what it would be right now. So now let's go and create our website. So for our website, we can just create kind of like a standard website. I don't really even have much ideas for the project, but the goal for the video is to show you how to create a website using Ruby on Rails and Bootstrap. So that's what we're gonna do. So to create a new Rails app, we can run the Rails new command, which accepts the parameter. And what we're gonna pass in is the app name. So whatever you wanna call your website, you can just put it in right here. So I'm just gonna call it bootstrap app. I know it's very creative. That's what I'm going with. And now here's the important part, which will help you install bootstrap right away for a new Rails app. So what you do is you can pass in the dash C option and then put bootstrap, which will make it use the bootstrap CSS library. You could also put tailwind, which is what I usually do in my videos. But since this video is all about bootstrap, we are going to use the bootstrap option. So now that that's good, let's press enter and it's gonna generate our brand new Rails app with bootstrap installed. Just give it a second to run through the installation command. Should be done in just one second. All right, interestingly enough, it's, it's using yarn. So I wonder if Bootstrap automatically uses a JavaScript compiler. That's what it looks like, because that's a lot of JavaScript. Whoa. 
Hold up, what's going on? We got deprecation warnings. Okay, this looks crazy. Um, <clears throat> but it looks like it completed. So now what we can do is let's CD into the app. So we'll CD into Bootstrap app. Now that we're inside of the new app, the way that you can start the server, usually it's bin slash dev if you use a CSS library. I'm not sure if that's still what it'd be. Oh, yep. It looks like bin slash dev is what you'd want to do. That we now have our app running. Although I see a bunch of errors. I wonder if maybe I don't have the right version of Node because I don't use ES build. Usually I just use. Uh, yeah, it almost looks like I don't have Node, but let's try to access the server by opening up the browser and going over to localhost colon 3000. All right, we don't see anything yet, which is actually fine because we haven't programmed anything. So if you see this page, it means that your app is working, Rails is installed, and everything's good. But obviously we don't have any code in the app. So that's the next thing that we'd want to generate. So what I usually do is just generate a simple controller for the home page. You could either do this through the generate command, or we could just do it by hand. I usually do it through the generation command, but it might be nice to see how you would create a controller from scratch. So what I'll actually do is we need to open up the code in the code editor. I'm going to open up a new terminal and I'm going to do code and I'll pass in the path to the folder that I want to open. This is going to open it up in VS code. This is the text editor that I like to use when I'm programming. Uh, if you guys don't have a text editor, I would recommend this for a beginner. It's pretty good and you can install all of these helpful extensions to help you program even better. So now that we have the app opened, uh, remember, this is just a skeleton app. There's nothing in here yet. So then first thing that I'm going to do is generate a home page. And I'm going to do that by creating a pages controller and then adding a home action. So we, like I said, we could do this with the generator, which actually saves us a bunch of time. But I'm just going to show you guys how it would be if we didn't want to use a generator, if we wanted to just do it from scratch. So to create the controller, I usually start off in the route, so I go to config routes.rb, and I'm going to set up a route. So what I'll do is I'll set the root down here at the bottom. They have a root commented out. So I'm just going to uncomment that, and then I'll change it. Instead of the post index, we can target the pages home. Just like that. It will now be expecting a pages controller and a home action, which we don't have. But if we were to reload, uh, we'll immediately see this error. See, there's uninitialized constant, no pages controller. So the next thing that we'd want to do is create the pages controller. Simply enough, what we'll do is we'll go back into our code editor and then we can head over to the app. So this is where all the code in our Rails app is usually stored. And what I'll do is I'll go into the controllers folder, which right now we only have the application controller. Now this application controller is pretty important because this is what all of your other controllers will inherit from. So you usually keep all of your like top level code that you might want to share between controllers. You could have it in here. And yeah, just remember that this is something that you're going to be inheriting from in all the other places. So also be careful not to put any methods that might be, you know, causing problems in other places. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to create that pages controller. So I'm going to right click on the controllers folder, click new file, and I'm going to create that pages underscore controller dot RB. Now, of course, it has to have a .rb extension because it's a Ruby file. And then inside of here, what we're going to do is we're going to define that class. You can write class and then put the name of the class, which is pages controller. So really, this is as simple as you need for a Ruby class. All you need is the class keyword, the name of the class, and then the end. And boom, that's a class. Uh, if we go ahead and reload, we shouldn't get the error, but we do get another error. Because I actually did it on purpose. I left out the inheritance from the application controller just because I wanted to show you guys what that would look like. So now we're missing certain methods on that class that it's expecting it to have, but it doesn't have. Uh, so you can easily fix that just by adding the appropriate code, which is making this class inherit from the application controller. And now it has all the methods defined here, which you might look at this and be like, hey, there's no methods defined here. We'll take a quick gander over here. The application controller, yeah, maybe there's no methods defined here yet, 
but it's inheriting from action controller base, which is actually where all of those methods are defined. Okay, so now let's go back to the pages controller. And what we're going to need now is a home action. So actually, if we if we go up into the browser and we reload again, now the error that we see is the action home could not be found. So there's no method for the home action. <clears throat> so you can kind of see how you gradually go through the process of developing and you get these errors and they kind of help guide you to where you're going. That's something that programmers usually like to think about is like just that concept. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to define the home action. So let's go to the pages controller. I'm going to indent two spaces because that's usually how, like that's the coding standard for Ruby. It's two spaces and dents. Now we're going to do a def to define a method. So we'll write def space, and then we'll put the method name, which is going to be just the home method. So right here, that's all you need. This is the completed controller. If we reload, we no longer get the action is missing, but we do get a missing template error. So what that means is there's no HTML file that matches with this setup, which is going to be, since it's the pages controller, it's going to look for a pages folder and a home template inside the views. So that's going to be where you put your HTML. So take a look. It even tells you right here. It says, for example, a pages controller home action defined here should have a corresponding view template and a file named here. So this is, it's literally telling you what it needs right here. All we have to do is create the file in this place. See app slash views pages slash home .html .erb. So that's what we're going to do. We'll fix this error. And the next thing you're going to see is an HTML page. So let's add that HTML page in. So it's going to be in the app folder again. But down here at the bottom, we have the views folder. So that's where all your front end code is going to be, like all your HTML. So we can come, uh, there's actually no folder for pages yet. We only have these two folders. So we're going to create another folder and we'll call it pages. And then inside of it, we'll create the file for the home.html.erb. And now this is the template that will be rendered for the home page. So you can just leave this empty for now, reload. And boom, you just see a white screen, nothing in it. That's exactly what's inside the file. So if we wanted to add just like a P tag, hello world, make sure to end that off, then reload. You'll see that we have that hello world text right there. So anything you put here will now get rendered onto your website. Very cool stuff. So now let's get into the bootstrap part of the video. By the way, we're already, we already have bootstrap installed which means all of the bootstrap components should just automatically work. So let's go over to the bootstrap website. So you can just look up bootstrap in the browser, click on the website. It's going to be the first one and let's go over to examples. So that's where all of the components are. At least that's where I usually find them. So if you scroll down, now we see snippets. So these are going to be your components that you could use. They have all these other different type of things. So they have like heroes. That's something that you might put on a homepage. Let's go ahead and take a look at the heroes. Check this out. So you could have this sort of page. Uh, there's a bunch of them. We have like this one with the left side and then all the, like the picture on the right side. We have a sign up form. So I'm pretty sure all of these are free or no. They don't really have an option to get the code. <laughs> so maybe these aren't free. I thought they were free, but I guess nothing's free in this world, right? You, you should be able to get the buttons at least. This looks different. Okay. So sorry guys, let's just try to figure out where the components are. So maybe it's in the docs. Here we go. Okay. So go over to the docs and then there's the component section. All of this stuff is free. You're allowed to use their components. It doesn't really look like they have, you know, the same type of stuff. That looks like it's more of the expensive packs or something. But you can still get a lot of helpful components. For example, cards. This is something that you're probably going to want automatically if you're going to have posts. You're going to want a nice looking card. So they have the code right here, which you can copy and then put your data inside of it. So we might want to mess with that if we add in some posts. Uh, let's see what else they have.
They got button groups. Boom. We're gonna you probably are gonna want buttons in your app. So there's like a different types of buttons. They just have regular buttons too. So if you want a nice button like this, it might sound silly to like a senior dev, but to a brand new coder, even getting a button like this can be such a pain. Well, not anymore. Because look at this. You can just copy any of these, drag them right in your app, reload, and you now have this nice pretty button. So it's that easy to add components. And you can also pair it along with just regular HTML and CSS. So if you already have those skills with like HTML, CSS, you could use that and then also use components to just save you time. Let me see what else we have. We got some nav. See, we have these nav links. And I think the other cool thing is that it actually includes JavaScript, which means these links should work automatically without adding in any custom JavaScript. You'll be able to like toggle through the sections. At least I'm pretty sure you can do that. Look, they have the live demo. Check it out. See how it just popped open a thing. All right. Um, and there's like much, much more to this. There's so much more. Check this out. Accordions. Right out of the box accordions. You don't have to write any sort of code for this. That's something that can be such a pain. Like who wants to think about writing this? That's why they do it for you. And see, they even have this nice little animation. So just using components can make your site look so much better. All right, and let's get to the next part, which is you don't have to just use the official components. You can look up free bootstrap components because bootstraps a CSS library. It really is just classes that, that people learn and they make up all this code. So there is free open source bootstrap components that you can use. So that's what we're gonna do. I just looked it up. This is like one website. I'm gonna see if I can grab some helpers from here. Look at this, right off the bat, we got all of this stuff for free. Let's see if we can find a homepage. This could almost be a homepage right here. Click get the code. All right, of course it's not free. Of course it's not free, guys. I think some of them were free. They really need a better way of filtering. Um, what about this one? Fast bootstrap. I just need something that looks good for this website. I, what I really want is like a homepage. Come on. Oh, maybe it's bootstrap templates. There is free bootstrap templates. I remember this from when I was getting into coding. It's kind of crazy. So you could grab something like this and then have all the code. It's actually on GitHub. So what would happen is you pull this in and you already have all the stuff like the JavaScript, CSS, images, everything. And we could, we could use this with our Rails app. That might be something that you guys want to see using a bootstrap template with Ruby on Rails. Cause like with these templates, they're awesome. They look great, but they don't really have any functionality, right? Like, I mean, look, this stuff actually does work. Look, this looks great. This looks really good. If you like, if you needed a, a resume site, this looks fire. I, honestly, I might even use this and then just bring it over to Rails or you wouldn't even need Rails. You could just kind of do an HTML project with this. I think finding ways to speed up your flow is awesome. Check this out. We all, we have more free dashboards. You can just do a free download and it'll give you all the code and we can mess with it. 